One last topic that comes up when we're dealing with conservation of momentum is the idea of the center of mass. I've talked about the concept of center of mass before, now I'd like to put it on more rigorous footing. The idea of center of mass is very useful when you want to treat a collection of objects as one thing. So first we'll define how we can calculate the center of mass of a set of objects. Basically, it's a weighted average of particle positions. So here's our definition. The location R of the center of mass of a system of objects is equal to the summation of the products of their individual masses times their individual positions, that summation divided by their total mass. The velocity of the center of mass is just the rate of change of position of the center of mass. So here I've got the expression for position and saying how it changes with time. The mass doesn't change with time. All that's changing is the position of each object. So we can re-express our equation to reflect that fact. So here I've taken out the masses which are constant quantities and expressed it as the rate of change of each individual particle. That rate of change of the position of each individual particle is just the velocity of the individual particle. So the velocity of the center of mass turns out to be equal to the sum of the mass times velocity of each individual particle divided by the total mass of the system. In other words, the velocity of the center of mass is equal to the total momentum of the system divided by the total mass of the system. Bear in mind that the position, velocity, velocity of the center of mass, and momentum are all vectors in this equation. So we have a corresponding equation for each cardinal direction. One of the nice things about considering the center of mass of a system of particles is that internal interactions don't change the velocity of the center of mass because they don't change the total momentum of the system. What does change the velocity of the center of mass is a net external impulse. When that happens, of course, the velocity of the center of mass changes accordingly. So to summarize, in an isolated system, there is no outside force acting on it. Therefore, the velocity of the center of mass of an isolated system is constant. This brings up the very useful idea of using the center of mass of a system as a reference point for a coordinate system. What this means is we'll have the coordinate being at the center of mass of the system, and as the center of mass moves with a constant velocity, so does the origin of the coordinate system. This reference frame has a number of qualities that make it very simple to work in. For instance, the total momentum, adding up the momentum of all the different particles, is zero. In this reference frame, if we're having just two particles, if we're looking at a collision, the momentum of the different particles are equal and opposite because they have to add up to zero. Their speeds are inversely proportional to their masses. The heavier object has a slower speed, the lighter object has a faster speed. And if there are elastic collisions, the speeds are the same before and after. In inelastic collisions, the speeds all decrease by the same proportion. In totally inelastic collisions, the final velocities are zero. So it often makes sense when modeling a collision to transform the coordinate system to be a center of mass coordinate system, treat the collision in the center of mass coordinate system because that's much easier to do that. So then when you have the results for the velocities in the center of mass reference frame, transform it back to your original reference frame. Those additional two steps of transforming to the center of mass reference frame and then back to the original reference frame are usually well worth it.